Hello, everyone. Welcome to my podcast. I have Zero here, along with my partner, Alvastar. Well, partner in crime, that is. Um, so <laughs> today, uh, that our topic is going to be about older furs and what the community was really based upon and how it's grown so far at this moment. So, my question for both of you, what is changed from today versus when the free community has changed back in the 80s? Well, it's like with a lot of it these days, and like a lot more kids are getting involved and stuff. Uh, but when the fandom was started, it was mostly adults. You know, just a way to have fun, relax, and just be yourself. And, you know, without those people, like, a lot of the cons of these days wouldn't even be around. It wouldn't exist. You know, it's the older furs that um, run this stuff and make, get it all ready. Yeah, uh, back then, you wouldn't even think to hear the word furry unless you actually went on the internet and you would just find those, like, forums and you would just talk to those people that, you know, would be like, oh, hey, I see myself as a cat or a dog, a wolf, a lion. And, you know, like, you don't really, you, you didn't get those kind of, like, meetups up until, like, I guess, early 2000s or something. So, yeah. you know, when you meet those conventions, then you just meet all those people like, I am a part of you. And it feels fantastic. Well, here's my yeah, question. We all click real easy. Is that back in the 80s, it used to be nothing but a kink thing, right? So how did it go from having to be a, you know, sexual fascination to a fandom? Hmm. Yeah, it's... It's like what everyone says, though. You go first. <laughs> oh, no. I never really thought of it as a kink. I just kind of saw it as more of a, a lifestyle or, I guess, a personality. I mean, I guess I could see where the sexuality comes in. You want to be like the girl. I'm the I am the wolf man and you're. Uh, the innocent, you're the innocent human being that I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna mm -hmm. nibble all over, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, the prey item. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, the, to the, give the, people the unsuspected prey a little insight. So, Zero, what is your Sona based off of? What made you into this? So, okay, so, uh, my original Sona was more of a like canine dragon hybrid I, I know it sounds a little weird but uh there was never really like an image i just like the fact of like having those type of like bestial qualities so uh, up until then uh when ghostly came out with the papa Jen, i'm like that looks good <laughs> so I, that's what i kind of based it off of also a long time a uh, fan of both Kingdom Hearts and Dragon Ball Z, so I'm like, you know what? Let me get the hair up for one because I love, I love the wild main type hair. It kind of, it kind of suits when you have like a, a beast, you know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So <laughs> basically, you're cosplaying as into your Sona, into your your interests. Well, basically. And then I got this big boy. <laughs> so I'll start the same question. Why is your Sona the way it is? Well, for me, it's just been a, a mixture of some of the, like, the more favorite things I've got in life, you know. I've always been a big fan of Huskies. I literally have one. He's laying right there. You can't see him, but trust me, he's there. <laughs> and um, how I got like the colors and stuff is because... Chipmunks, like, my family used to have a bunch of pet chipmunks when I was growing up. 
when my father built shed for him outside cage and everything. So yours is part and of I guess like that's you know family and childhood. Yeah, and I, I've always liked both of them, so I just mixed them together. That is awesome. So you know, everyone's got their own story backstory behind their avatar, and it's really awesome when you see them come to life. With the whole cosplaying thing with you guys and, you know, your sonas and everything, how did you guys get into the fandom? How did you hear about it? <laughs> I got a funny story about the way I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Base. So, oh, sorry, go first. What if you talk? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I insist. Uh, okay. Speak. All right. So I used to, I, I still to this day, but play a lot of games, and I've met a lot of people over the the years. And I had a um, one friend who lived in Germany, and he one day sent me a picture, asking me, "What does this mean?" Because I used to like break down like into English, like and tell him what it means and whatever. And one day, one day he sent me a little picture of this little fox that says he's gonna get yiffed. Oh no. And after and after a little bit of research, I'm like, oh, it basically means you're gonna get fucked. But from that, I didn't find like the kinky side of the fandom. I found like the wholesome side, artists, people making characters and enjoying life and making new friends and being in a community of people that just click right away. It was later on when I found like the not safe for work aspect of it, but Which are really good at never it's never bothered me at any point. You were the definition really called it, the but... cuddle the cuddle the cuddle salute. <laughs> What's wrong with liking cuddles, huh? Because cuddles lead to something, sir. Not always. Not always. Mm, not <laughs> to what I experienced. Or seen. <laughs> hey, yo. Well, that's your experience. I've, I could cuddle with a lot of people and just enjoy it, watch movies, have fun. Listen, I get scared enough to where it's like if something's like, I, I lift my leg and something's poking out and I'm like, nope, I'm going that, that way. <laughs> Bye. See ya. <laughs> Exposing me, how dare you <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Zero Your turn So So, um How I discovered Basically was Through a very old website Which I'm sure you two might know of Gaia Online <laughs> Oh yeah oh. <laughs> So uh, Around the time They didn't really have Like uh, furry style type things, but you know the little avatars you can customize and whatnot. So there was this one specific item. I don't remember the name, but it gave you like these like different types of textures. Like one was a lava, one was water, and then they had one that was called animal. So I put that one on. I'm like, oh, huh, okay, I like that. So you know, customizing it through years back and in, going into high school, I'm like, I kind of forgot about the whole furry aspect and whatnot. And then I met a person who, unfortunately, I'm no longer friends with, but they told me more about, like, the furry side of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I can totally see myself doing this as a lifestyle. But told me how expensive it is with the fursuits and everything. I'm like, okay, yeah, so I, I guess I'll have to be... <laughs> I'll have to be a, a normal, non-suited fur. <laughs> and <laughs> later, like you said... I found the NSFW side, uh, just scrolling through the websites, and I find this one game. It's called Emerus. Oh, I'm like, oh, I know that. <laughs> Saw that <laughs> game. It was still in. It was still in a uh, high development, but it allowed you to create a persona. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, I see where this is going. I enjoyed it. Went to like other forums. Kind of made my, you know like a little appearance every now and again and I'm like okay okay now now I'm here 
<laughs> so now I enjoy <laughs> like being being the the fur that I am today. So with you both finding the NSFW side really, really soon into the fandom and everything, what were your thoughts just slowly coming into the fandom, but also seeing that like immediately? Honestly, it didn't bother me at all. It's like, I'm one of the more open-minded people anyone will ever meet. Like, and that's why I guess it just never bothered me, you know? I wasn't, I didn't dive into that early days, but I just enjoyed, like, the, the more safe work side of it for a while. And I've, like I said, been on a bunch of different forums over the time, you know, create your profiles, chat with people, meet like-minded people. I've, like, ever since I've been in the fandom, I've met a root. <laughs> Sorry. I've met a lot of really nice ah! people, and, um, <laughs> and um, there's no way I would ever change it. If anything, I would want to dive into like fandom way sooner. So, like, ever since I was a kid, I've always liked, you know, like the anthropomorphic cartoons, mm -hmm. movies, whatever. And anthropomorphic just means, you know, like humanized you know he can speak like bugs bunny daffy duck you know the, yeah. all those other type of things mm -hmm. yeah like i only wish i got in it sooner like there's a lot of people who say you know like once they find the fandom they say huh i've been in this fandom a lot longer than i ever realized it just took me this time to find it officially so how <laughs> old were you when you came into the fandom well, when I officially found it, um, I think I was like 17. All right, it's been a while now. <laughs> Zero? Oh, so, um, so yeah, because the furry fandom wasn't around that often, uh, in my childhood, I hadn't, I didn't really get officially into the fandom until I was like maybe in my like junior or senior year of high school. You know, at least on that time, that's when I, you know, when the internet was still or was in its prime, I what I call it. And you would have, you know, the internet a lot faster, you know, wireless and whatnot. But yeah, so I was. I guess more of a closet fur. I wouldn't really yeah. tell anyone that I'm a furry because in that time, if you say anything about LGBTQ furries or whatever the case may be, they're going to laugh. They're going to laugh and insult you and make fun of you. And it's like, you don't really want to deal with that kind of drama. So I just kind of just kept to myself. Uh, thank, Thank whoever the hell is up there that I managed to actually have friends that accept me for being, you know, fur. So that was really nice. Um, yeah, after a while, it just, it, it was a part of my lifestyle, you know? So that's the funny thing is, is that because what at my old job when I was living still back in Ohio and everything is that I used to work at a grocery store. They knew who furries were, but they knew me as me and they didn't know that i came out as a furry until later on before i left or uh you know at the very end before i left because of i started wearing my dog collars again because of i feel naked without it but it's just the fact is is that you know people still accepted me for who i was they they seen the beyond the furry they actually saw me for me and they started liking my TikToks and some of my old co-workers back from a few years and everything. God bless America. But it's just the fact is, is that once somebody actually, you know, accepts for who you are and everything, that's like the most genuine feeling that you could ever have. No, oh, yeah, I agreed. Indeed. Because I know there's a lot of people out there, you know, like from what you're saying, um, when you 
or when you become a furry and it's telling others, a lot of people feel like they're going to get judged. <laughs> I'm having technical but difficulties. When you, <laughs> but when you're in the <laughs> fandom, like, there is no judgment. Well, everyone's, that's the one thing that I try. I try seeing that, you know, in a more than just that way because of with the furry fandom and everything it's supposed to be a fun make friends and everything but then you know also you have your drama side you have your nsfw side you have your your wholesome side that people just doesn't really like you know being a part of that whole nsfw theme which is very understandable yeah. but what do you think about kids being in the fandom I mean, overall, I don't think we have to do anything about that. Disney's kind of doing it for them. <laughs> <laughs> because but, I see um... a lot of kids saying that they're, fur uh, they're furries and everything. I mean, heck, my daughter, you know, she just got her first tale from one of her friends at school. And she's calling herself a furry or like, you know, this, this little trend that's going around with the kids is a Therian, but... That's another talk for another day, because that stuff, like, really peeves me off because of what they're doing to their bodies. Yeah. Well, there is, um, there is a lot of kids in the fandom these days, and a lot of the conventions that are made, they are set up for, you know, the adult aspect of it, and then the kid aspect. You know, that's completely separate. And no adult furry wants any kind of drama. Especially me, or you. Well, that's that's the problem with us old furs today, is, is that now, since kids have been coming here into VRC and everything, and, like, you know, attended by an adult, or, you know, whatever is going on, like, they're talking mad, you know, smack, and... All this other, you know, inconvenience things. And then us adults just want to hang out, drink, have fun, you know, like, just have the time of our lives, de-stress from the real world and everything. But then yet, you know, here comes these kids that don't follow the rules and then want to come on and destroy our fun and everything because of we get in trouble regardless, but they think that's okay. Yeah, they really just don't think of the consequences of it. So, for, from my past experiences going to, like, different worlds that are, like, either um, event or, like, public-wise, these kids tend to ask, why do you want to be a furry? You know, they think, oh, that we like having fleas on us or we like the collar things or we like licking our asses or whatever the case may be. And it's like, no, that's not it. It's not it's not that aspect. It's just we just like being the animal. That's it. Those those yeah. they, they think that we that we act that we want to act like actual animals when we don't. It's it's that's a little unorthodox if you ask me. Well, it's, it's the same thing as being a dragon. You are a mythical creature. Like, there's no such thing as dragons. Like, you're a chusky. There's no such thing as a husky chipmunk. <laughs> like, we're, we're our own characters that we want to bring to life that are mythical, basically. Yeah, most people in the fandom love artistic talent, and you know, it's a way of expressing it. Exactly, mm -hmm. whether it be like, you know, computers, drawing, uh, 3D art, whatever it is, is that that's how it goes. Like, that's where a lot of money goes, is to people. Yeah, and, uh, a lot of fairies out there, you know, donate to all different kinds of charities and everything. Like, we're a, a very supportive bunch. Yes, yeah, because... I know that when you go to cons and everything, they have some sort of charity for, like, you know, sick kids or, like, you know, helping veterans when they need it or, you know, those mm -hmm. whole big 
communities and stuff even like you know anime cons they have the same thing but people don't see that side of us is the good side that we're trying to help people like when i got hacked i had the whole community send me as much and then i had to literally tell them to stop because of i finally got out of that whole debt situation but they's like here i just want to give this to you because of i i love your content i've had people come to me saying you inspired me to be like this whether they're free or not like they like my attitude style they like that i don't care they look up to me as a person hell some of them look up to me as a mother figure and ask me questions about you know what their mother never taught them like that feels good in my soul yeah i always enjoy how complimented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then yet yeah, there's what my tiktok's mostly about <laughs> There's the haters, you know, of the community to where, you know, younger generations and everything today, which really, me being as a parent from the 90s, because I was born in 90 and everything, like kids being on their phones nowadays, kids not going outside and playing, getting muddy, coming inside late, like, you know, that whole type of thing. It's just like, what happened? Like, my son, he's so addicted, he actually stole a phone from school and now has a court date. Because if he was so addicted to having any type of electronics, that's what this world is coming to. And it sucks because of the kids can't be kids. And then now, like, you know, this whole drama, everything, bullying, cyberbullying and everything, like, this hurts the good side of the fandom what we're trying to do and then all of these kids and everything come on to here acting like they're all big bad and tough when they're actually really not behind the computer screen keyboard warriors exactly. they're like all tough behind the screen but but in your face won't say a word that it really upsets me to this day but then yet, here we are, us old furs and everything. We're still here. We're still vibing and everything else. But with all this commotion and everything going on. We don't, we don't always on, have a phone in our hand. I mean, even like, let's say the 20-year-olds. Okay, the, the younger adults of this generation. They're still trying to make it, you know, kid-friendly. When this fandom was never meant for minors at all this was an adult's way of getting rid of stressful life chances somewhere we can go and do fun things and because of how nice we all are the, the cons and everything decided to integrate weddings have kids there you know have their own bit of fun well, I understand well, then, the cons because of they want to see big, yeah. fluffy, you know, people dressed in suits, which is okay. Mm -hmm. But what really upsets me is that they're starting to go away with the adult time now. Because of a lot of furs. Right along the lines of the nighttime. Right. A lot of furs are destroying, you know, uh, hotel rooms. They're destroying government property. They're getting drunk off their asses and not being responsible. Yeah, they're giving the fairy name a bad name. Right. Being destructive. And that's why our fandom is getting such a bad reputation because of people can't be responsible in their adult life choices. And when it comes to stuff like media, media only like to show the negative sides of stuff. Because, you know, it gets views. Like They don't ever I, show all the not, the good stuff that we do. Right. I can honestly say I've had my fair share of doing stupid shit. Okay? I mean, I took... I was drunk one night and I took a BB gun and started popping everybody's fucking, you know, Christmas decorations. <laughs> but, you know, that yeah. was... I was, like, in my early 20s at that point. But still, I'm not proud of it to this day. I thought I was like, you know, a complete nutter bitch. But, you know, with me growing up and everything, I've I've grown up. 
Like, I don't do that stuff anymore. Yeah, we've all been through that kid phase. It's just our kid phase was more outside oriented. Mm-hmm. No phones. Yep. Go do stuff outside. Go to the parks, you know. Go get dirty. Go be with your friends for reals. Go be mud puppy. Well, it's Even like... Even though your parents would be mad at you when you got home dirty, you know, they still encourage you to do that because... I would go join funny. them. I, that was used to be my nickname <laughs> was mud puppy. You'd see me in a mud puddle just playing. <laughs> yeah, let's go mud in. Oh, I wish. So what are your experiences with all of this, Zero? Well, uh, I've been a closeted person my entire life. I'm not going to lie. So, I, like I said, I had friends that accept me for being a fur. So, I, you know, I had the opportunity to go hang out with them, go to movies and whatnot. Just the playing normal social life and whatnot. Uh, but, yeah, I was one of those, I would guess, I would say fortunate to not be bullied because I was a fur. No, that was only because the only people I knew were just amongst my group. Um, TikTok now. Different story. Uh, the hate comments are insane. I, uh, You know about the filter for the hate comments that, you know, when you post up a, a video, they're going to, like, hide the comment because, it's, you know, it's not yeah. appropriate. So the amount, I, the amount I've seen, this one in particular, I'll never forget. This one told me to go KMS myself. I'm like, wow. They really try to go hard for a video, no less. And then when I make content on like related to like Dragon Ball Z, I'm getting a few of them that are like, Kira Toriyama did not die for this. I'm like, bro, it's just it's just a video. Calm down. You know, the, you make something you like and you want for other people to enjoy it. And, you know, you you get those people that do enjoy it. But the, the comments are crazy, man. You know, I'm not a strong minded individual, but, you know, can't it, it, it kind of hurts like getting, you know, getting thrown a dart at. You know, after a while, that hole is going to get bigger and bigger and it's going to be like, what's the point of recording anymore? You know, thank what? God that I have my... I have my partners and my friends to back me up and tell me not to quit. I'm like, sure, ain't gonna quit. Well, it's just like, you know, a lot of people came to me saying that, you know, I make tasteful content, let's just say. I'm not nude. I don't like, you know, flaunt my 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 coochie and everything like uncovered, you know. I, I put tasteful videos, dance videos and everything. Uh, I used to whole, do the whole mommy dummy videos and all that other shit. But when I got attacked, uh oh. Oh, bye. God <laughs> damn it. Stick drift. Okay, I'm back. But once I finally, like, spoke out. A lot of people weren't getting attacked anymore because nobody had the balls to say something. And then they come after me saying is that, well, you need to tone it down. You need to stop all this because of the, the fandom. We're trying to make the fandom wholesome. Okay. Any type of fandom that you come across, whether it's the furry fandom, it's anime fandoms, it's like, you know, let's just say Dragon Ball Z fandoms or... Whatever, you know, everything has a lewd version of it. Or a different lore. Right, or a yeah, different exactly. lore to it. But... It exists, there is of it. Exactly. Just like, okay, for instance, Power World. The day it comes out, where's Rule 34? They made it <laughs> a little power line that, that sleeps with human beings. And if any of you don't know what Rule 34 is, it is a porn website that people make drawings of. Minors do not go there. Bad. 
God bless America. Okay. But like I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, with all of this saying that we're trying to make the uh, the fandom wholesome and everything else like that, nobody can actually say that they're wholesome because of, I know what they do behind the scenes and then they tell us to go do that. Like when they finally find a partner and everything, I know that you all are having fun times. That's no doubt about it. But once you have a consistent content and everything that people love and enjoy and, you know, not basically harming anybody, yes, kids are going to see it. But, my lord, attacking people because of the way that you're, you're, you're expressing yourself and everything is just fucking stupid. We're just doing what we enjoy doing, you know? Creating videos, making people laugh. Although, you know? it does and make me laugh. they come along and do that. It makes me laugh because of one person told me that I was taking advantage of lonely men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. So, every time that I posted a Dommy Mommy video or, like, you know, a dance or something that I you know, had a little bit less clothing on than I do now. I was like, whoop, here I go. Posting for lonely old men again. <laughs> Hashtag lonely men in the video. But <laughs> it, it's, it, it, I just made it as a joke to make myself laugh because of, you know, a lot of people do it because of they're not comfortable in their own bodies, but they're more comfortable in their avatar because they see themselves as this thing that they created. That's the reason why people do what they do nowadays. Especially us old adults. Us old adults have more self, uh, self-confidence than anything. Like either we don't like our bodies. Or we don't like who we are. But then we cope by making something that helps us cope. Whether it be an IRL situation or here on VR chat. Yes, like I had someone once tell me, like, pretty much every furry has some kind of body dysmorphia. Because they, when they're in their sauna, they feel happy. They be themselves. Exactly. But then when it comes to real life, they may not like how they look or whatever. But when they get here on VR chat, that's when they're the most relaxed and most have fun. Right. It's an escape of reality. Like, Zero, how tall are you? Oh, oh my leg. <laughs> I'm 5'11". Okay, so <laughs> how tall as, uh, since you are part dragon, how tall is your Sona? Oh, he would be about seven foot. Seven foot? Okay, so you feel more happier and more comfortable in your avatar, right? Definitely. Yeah. It's just like me. I wish I had this type of body. You shut up. <laughs> but here's the thing is, is that I wish I had, like, you know, a nice juicy butt like this. And, and well, I try to take my characters, you know, tatas as much as mine are because I'm happy with my boobies. I like my little boobies. I don't have bad back problems because of my boobies. I have it because of, you know, old experience of work. But I try to make my sona as much as close to my body as much as possible. That's the reason why, like, I'm starting to get comfortable with my little pooch, you know, from after having two kids, you know. But that's me. I have an avatar that's like that. Except for I can't get her tits to shrink. The way I would like them to. <laughs> it's like my avatar high in game is basically identical to real life me. Yeah, you try to get me to do that, but I don't like to. <laughs> I, I wish because I had you have to look like up this. to me. I have a dad bod. <laughs> I got a tum tum, man. I don't have. I don't. I wish I had this kind of muscular structure. <laughs> hey, dad bods are hot. Okay, that's a pillow. 
That's like majorly pillow status, okay? <laughs> That's how I see it. Because I only weigh 130 pounds and I'm five foot three, so I'm I'm a short shit. Cute little puppy yeah. bean. You know what? You can go <laughs> like kiss my big fat toe. Yeah, maybe later. Oh my lord. <laughs> All right, y'all. I am. See, it's, I, it's fun. It's fun to joke around. You know, it's it's a lot of fun. You're lucky I can't give you my finger. This one's got the fucking stick drift. Well, you know I can, but I won't. Yeah, with the cute little eye face. That is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, y'all. I am ending the podcast here. Next time that we do a podcast, I'm going to have younger furs here asking them questions about the generation towards the old furs and so on and so forth. Also, after that, I'm going to be having another podcast with just myself and probably Alvastar talking about how the internet affects your mental health. So I shall see you, beans, next week. <laughs>